awareness angel making sure my wings protect the different the stranger thing i'm an autism awareness angel is good because i'm cool with the unique behavior i'm an autism awareness angel will you accept me because i accept you i'm an autism awareness angel because the view from the spectrum is a better point of view hi i'm tally and welcome back to autism 30. today is another episode of parent talk this is the fourth episode in the series and once again we have our very famous now kathy and tina joining us in studio good good afternoon kathy and tina how are you oh doing i would say medium thanks for having us (laughs) well on medium and what about you kathy how are you feeling well thank you and i'm I'm feeling kind of famous. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, you do realize that currently we're heard in 98 countries. So uh, I consider I that, you know, I don't know what you would call it, famous or well heard abroad. How, do, how does that sound? Is that more comfortable Makes me to you? I wish ear? I knew how to say like hello in a lot of different languages. Exactly. Unfortunately, <laughs> I, I don't really know any languages. Well, currently uh, Russia or the Soviet Union is our uh, current top country. That, is that right? of who we listen who actually listens to our podcast so to those people's drasviti and priviet to wow. those people in that country <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> okay. nice. yeah. i hope that wasn't a swear word <laughs> no it wasn't it was actually hello and hi in russian sure, to yes. those people so sure. and i welcome you and i i thank you very much for your ears on on today's podcast now to get into it because i know time seems to just run really really rapidly in the parent talk series we want to address some of the questions that you had that we didn't get to another podcast so ladies would you mind if we just got right into it yeah sure. yeah hit us I know one question. (laughs) I know one question that I absolutely loved was, "What have you learned about yourself having a child with autism?" Kathy, oh my, what what have you learned about yourself having your wonderful child? I guess patience. I think is one of the main things that I have have learned that I have learned to become very patient, that things don't happen quickly um things have to get practiced um boy i i get told a lot wow you're a fantastic parent wow you know (laughs) well you you are but you just do what you're you're dealt with right you just handle what you have to to handle what's your what are your choices so i i i don't really know what i i learned with myself or uh, sorry about myself um But you want to know what I actually think you should give yourself more credit because of the fact that even though you say you deal with what you're dealt with, I mean, some people clearly don't make the best choices and you seem to really do you. I I I didn't know you before you you had your child and we met um, for certain circumstances. I was quite a different person. I can say that (laughs) (laughs) life was very different. Um, And, uh, you know, like it's it's never about me anymore, of course. I think the moment you have kids, it's never really about you. That's very but, true. Um, everything, I think everything we do, everything we do from the moment we get up to the moment we fall asleep is all about helping our child with autism, who's um, my youngest of two boys, and and making life run smoothly for the rest of the family. It's all about uh, coping and trying to improve his life. Absolutely. Mm. And you do a beautiful job. And he's such a lovely boy. Mm, I really, you. really like your son. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you, Tina? What have you learned about yourself? Um, well, a few different things. Something that just came to mind is that um, um, as we've dealt with autism over the years, I realized that I actually um, needed to get some help. So something I never really had sort of a pre-existing anxiety disorder, but certainly um, after the diagnosis and trying to work full time and having a lot of stresses, I realized that I needed some help. And so um, I'm glad I'm able to talk about it on this podcast because I think it's important for people to realize that uh, sometimes when professional help, there's no shame in that. Absolutely and, yeah. none whatsoever. And I think that's a really important thing for people to know about because of the fact that getting outside help is really a vital tool for many people. Yeah. And I'm a really big supporter of something called cognitive behavioral therapy. And it's just a type of um, therapy that's usually provided by a psychologist. And 
I guess an alternative to that might be sort of classic talk therapy, and you can visualize the movie where the person's sitting on that couch sideways and just talking about what's going on with their life to their shrink. But the difference with cognitive behavioral therapy is that it actually tries to break down the sort of negative self-thoughts that will get spinning in your head and challenge them so you can realize they're not true. So things like, this is too hard, I can't handle this, my life is too difficult, and whatever the person's personal thoughts are that are going through their head they sort of break them down and challenge that and it worked really really well for me and and you know it sometimes it's expensive it's not covered in our province certainly but you know we spend 140 dollars an hour on speech therapy day (laughs) you know and the thing about cbt is that it helps you retrain your brain and how you think so you go through you know a few months a few six months of therapy and then you can have success going forward without ongoing sort of psychotherapy so it kind of helps you going forward so it's a short-term investment for my long-term mental health and so that was really good and and I think that's a really important fact to mention in the sense that if you aren't yourself full that Mm -hmm. you have very little to give your child and I think it's really important to take care of yourself as the parent looking after Mm -hmm. the child and getting help is a really important factor you went and saw what you call a shrink or 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 a professional but other people might seek help of other people to support them which I think is really important people maybe some um, medication and if I can just Mm -hmm. jump in with something as absolutely um, I'm involved in a parent support group and I remember one night somebody who had just recently prescribed been prescribed um I guess an anti-anxiety medication asked the group how many people here um are taking something to cope and 80 percent of the the Mm -hmm. group put up their hands interesting yeah yeah and sometimes it's needed short term sometimes Mm -hmm. it's needed long term and and I think it's just a recognizing that it's okay and seeking that help Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just even downtime like something I've recognized in myself is that I do need downtime and I do I need to switch off with my husband and make sure I have a book club and time among adults and time where I don't talk about autism yes (laughs) um so yeah that's really important and so just one more thing I guess that I've learned is that I don't know if it's I've learned it about myself or it's just something I have learned is that sometimes it's not all going to be like perfect cookie cutter everything so um, it's okay if we're going somewhere or we're going on a trip that we sort of you know divide and conquer or maybe yes I always say render under Caesar that which are Caesar so (laughs) if we're going somewhere and my daughter it's not what she would like it's okay for her to just not go and we're not always going to get that perfect picture of the mom and the dad and the two kids smiling at the camera at Disneyland it may be that one child (laughs) doesn't even want to go to Disneyland yeah you know or maybe it's it's you know, I get to just treasure the times with my son and my husband will be off with my daughter and then we'll switch off. And just sort of that, I've learned about myself that I can let go of sort of those, like what I think it should be. Because sometimes I'm type A and I get like, oh, this is what we got to do. But it's good to just learn and realize that just it can be different and different is okay. So you've learned to basically let go of your pre-existing yeah. image of what you consider to be the perfect situation yeah and it's not going to go as planned and that's okay and that's okay and and I agree that is totally okay <laughs> I I know with with myself one of the things that I definitely learned um now I always knew I had um a mouth or I don't know <laughs> if that I can call it a mouth but I an I, assertive personality <laughs> thank you I, that actually sounds better <laughs> an assertive personality but I really didn't know how strong I was um when I absolutely put um, my son's needs ahead of how people thought about me. Mm -hmm. And I never knew I could be so strong in advocating for another person. And I never knew I had that within me to to actually do some of the things that I do. So I know having my child has been um, a real revelation as to what my capacity to advocate or to support other people. I mean, myself as a teacher, I would always go into uh, meetings supporting my students and advocating for them, and I would always call them my babies, and I would 
love them like I always told them I said I have no children which I didn't when I was teaching and I said I I love you like you're my own children but having my own child I never really knew what I was talking about I realized uh-huh, that when I was teaching true. and the mama bear and the fight that I have in me now I yes. never knew in a million years I would have this much drive to get things Actually, done that's for very them. well spoken yeah that's that's true the whole mama bear um, <laughs> I wanted yeah, to say mama definitely. bear from the very beginning yeah. and I'm glad you said <laughs> very it very protective it's of our, our little ones absolutely yeah. and 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 I know um, I've lost some people that haven't in my life who haven't necessarily supportive or felt that I was too um, assertive but I've I've learned to accept as you have Mm -hmm. Tina that certain situations are not going to be perfect and if certain people want to be out of my life because I'm like that I have now learned to hold the door open for them Mm -hmm. and let them pass through and you know I think I think you do lose a lot of um, friends that you used to have maybe um, we drop them because mm-hmm. we don't, you know, they don't get our lives and uh, we don't fit into theirs anymore. Yes. Um, but I think that's very true. And I had another thought about um, <laughs> Go for the perfect cookie cutter and not the image <laughs> that you expected. I walked around my house last night and I said to my husband, 20 years ago, <laughs> if you would have said I was going to live like this, I would never have believed it. I used to be very, uh, uh, a neat freak, I guess, a neat freak. (laughs) And now my house is anything but neat. And it was a little bit hard to live with in the beginning. But now, yeah. (laughs) Your house is clean. You must have been quite a neat freak before. You haven't seen the house in a while. (laughs) It's gone downhill quite quickly. I, I, um... There's a Facebook post I saw something about like the my cleaning philosophy is let it slide until people are coming over and then clean like hell until they show up <laughs> yeah. or something like that. I, the that's wording's wrong there, do. but that's, that's what we do. We try to put on a nice front when people come to visit, but it's like don't open cupboards, don't open closets. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot ruined. take you on a tour of my house. This main level is all you will see today. Uh, <laughs> nothing else is uh, like laundry. What is with laundry? I don't know. I know that's like oh, everyone's life is about never laundry, ending. but well, before having my child, laundry and I were not friends. I never liked doing laundry. <laughs> Even when I was single by myself, yeah. I think that was on the mm-hmm. on the the negative um, thing regarding thing to me. Do list. Yeah. Reg- and um, now to to get on the next question that we had is, I know all three of us are very fortunate in the sense that our marriages are still very happy and existing. And I know, unfortunately, <laughs> happy and existing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the, well, well, we're still married in, the, in, in that sense. And I know, unfortunately, the statistics are that 80% of relationships with a child with special needs and in divorce. And I know a question that we got is, how do we make our marriages successful? What do you think it is about our, our marriages where we're all seemingly to be happily married people? Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to say one thing, too, is that if, if anyone's listening and they are part of that statistic, I, it's nothing that they've done wrong or that we're doing right. Or I don't want it oh, to come heavens, like, no. no, no, of course. Um, it, I think part of it is a little bit of luck. You end up partnered with someone and, and you both handle the situation in similar ways or you have a compatibility there that, um, that you're lucky when it, when it all comes to it and it's revealed that you've got a compatibility. But, um, Absolutely, yeah. and I concur with what you're saying, Tina. My, by, by my question is, yes, we are all very lucky yeah, that yeah. we've been dealt the hand that we have mm-hmm. been, and it and it isn't. Yeah, uh, I just I, wanted to. Yeah, make no, that and clear, I think yeah. it's really important that you've done that. Yeah. So, so let's start off with you, Tina. You've got a wonderful <laughs> Since I jumped husband. In. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I think part of it is a team attitude. So, if you're just starting out this journey. It is important to have those conversations from the beginning about how you are a team and how you're going to work as a team. And in our household, what works is a real division of labor. So um, I certainly am better at the organizing and the finding the therapies and getting that all paid and, and 
Um, my husband certainly likes just to know what he has to do and when. <laughs> and um, yes. and versus me, I'm very tired at the end of the day. I work full time. And my husband seems to have a lot more go in him. And he's the one that can just do the crazy running around the house playing with them and stuff. So we both obviously do some planning and some playing. But, yes. um, you know, sometimes we just sort of know what our strengths are and, and just have a real team attitude. And, and also, I'm someone that when I get stressed, I get kind of grumpy and... <laughs> Maybe a little well, bit hard I, to deal with. That's a human and thing, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And um, my husband is very forgiving, and I'm forgiving of him. And we just recognize that sometimes the stress gets to you, and you just try not to take it personally. So I think that's really important, to give forgiveness to each other when, when you don't handle the bad days very well. And just knowing how to communicate. So, I mean, that's the true for any marriage. But it's just, you know, trying to thank each other for the little things and, and not... Let insulting each other, or, you know, all those things about when you fight and you know, using I statements, you know, <laughs> but just um, making sure that you keep the lines of communication open and and um, yeah, that's about it. I don't know that that was any great thought process. Well, there, actually, it was because yeah, clearly what you did say is one, you communicate with each other, mm -hmm. two, you have a division of labor, mm -hmm. three, I think one of the things that you mentioned clearly is you really appreciate what each other is doing. I think gratitude. Uh, towards your partner in a marriage mm -hmm. as the years go on some people lose that so what you're what you're actually saying is great advice in the sense that you're actually staying <coughs> excuse me stating that you know you actively make a conscious thought to keep those things going which mm -hmm. I think is really valuable information so don't put yourself yeah. down okay. <laughs> yeah. and what about well you Kathy I think what you're saying um, Tina is very true I, I lucked out too when I met my husband um, and I, I was married before, and I had another long-term relationship um, as well. So, uh, you know, I kind of knew what I was looking for and, and compatibility so that and respect, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. And so I think because we um, have that, along with the good communication, um, uh, that when th things get challenging, uh, you know, um, we cope, like you say, as a team. It, it's a team. We're working together as as it as a team for our family and um, um, and much like you said too uh, we split things up um, and luckily for me my husband is um, is quite good at doing dishes oh <laughs> lucky you <laughs> um, I um, I do all the the autism front stuff too the the searching for therapies and lining up the the therapists and yes. doing all the schedules and the payments and whatnot, like you, tracking the money. Um, and he does a lot of the, um, you know, the, the, other, the other stuff. So we, we split it up. No, but I think it's important. So I think, gosh, I, I'm pretty much adding yeah. similar values in the sense that I think, um, I mean, with myself and my husband, I know clearly when we did meet, I mean, because we met when I was older as well, um, and we really knew what we wanted in a partner, and yeah. we knew that when we wanted children, what we, how we were going to, to uh, raise, them. raise the child, whether it be uh, typical or not. And um, and now that we have a child, it's exactly what you're saying. Our our first focus is our child, mm -hmm. and making sure that everything. Uh, of what our child needs comes first before ourselves. And I think the most important thing is we both agree with those values because I know when you're in a relationship, I don't know about you, but a common thing that I hear is that some people feel ignored or some people don't share the same values in, re in relation to raising mm -hmm. children and a lot of conflict happens mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. those lines. But with my husband and I, our common uh, goal is to make sure that our child is okay and that his needs come before our own. And exactly what you're saying, we really do work as a team. And mm -hmm. and because I know I'm very type A as mm -hmm. well, is that we do also have a one week, you know, talk about um, our parenting and about what he, f he feels that I could be doing better and what he feels I could be doing better and different strategies. Because I know when you have a child with autism, 
your therapist will give you tasks to try at home and then we try to make sure that those tasks are scheduled within the week like modeling behavior etc which I know some of you um, who are listening do that as well so we really touch base every single week to make sure that one we're on the same page you know among the division of labor that it's important to like ask for help so you're, you're talking about having a once a weekly session certainly we don't have it scheduled like that but when someone's feeling overwhelmed they need to ask for help and um, even though I am responsible for most of the autism things, uh, we were doing one therapy. It, it's called handle therapy. That doesn't really matter, but it's like a set of small exercises that you do every day to help deal with neurological challenges. And um, I just put my husband in charge of that. Like, here's yes. one therapy. It's a discreet thing. It, it's in your ball. It's in your camp. Yes. And you're responsible for learning how to do it and doing it every day, etc. And that just helped because it, it was kind of teetering too much onto my workload and stuff. So. You know, just asking for help and then seeing what you can carve off to do between with the other partner. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's really important. I, I think it's a common thread about what you've learned and and concepts in a great marriage is I think a strong belief that we all hold is one, you can't do this alone in the sense that you need to if you need to ask for help it's totally acceptable to do that and it's actually encouraged that you do that because the better equipped you are as an individual the better your child will be mm -hmm. and obviously the better your marriage will be as well and um in, i know some people have even gone to marriage counseling so just like we were talking oh, about absolutely. in that first question uh, about myself needing therapy you know for any couples out there you know, you, you may have planned a life and then you thought it would go a certain way and then autism comes into your life and it doesn't mm -hmm. quite go as planned. And um, so sometimes you just need help in that case too. To, to um, And the other thing I know about help is that sometimes people don't know how to help. So people want to help you, but they have, they're very unclear on what to do. So if you have friends and family available, just be explicit. Like, we really need you to babysit on this day and this time so we advice. can go out on a date night. Or we really need you, like if grandma's around, can you pick them up from therapy once a week? And whatever it is, but just mm -hmm. putting it out there like I need help. People feel helpless. They don't understand how to help. So you have to sort of ask for what you want, which is a general life lesson. But it's very true for autism mm -hmm. parenting too. Absolutely. Do you have anything to add, Kathy? No, I don't. Not on this one. Um, now, I think the third and our final question uh, that we're going to ask today, and this ties into pretty much the two prior questions that we had, is what are some of the revelations that you've had raising a child with autism? Tina. Uh, yeah, well, it all kind of cycles back. So, you know, working with my therapist and with my own self-reflection, I used to think about the worst case scenario. So was my daughter going to end up in a group home, unable to have a job, unable to, you know, fill in the blank there. But um, <clears throat> I realized that that actually not knowing where she's going to end up, that question is actually can be very freeing because it could be both good or bad. And so um, uh, I don't know where she's going to end up. And um, what I just need to do is not focus so much on thinking about the worst case scenario and pre-planning for the worst case scenario and just my revelation was I just need to work on supporting her now and keep the hope that I don't actually know where she's going to end up and she may do a lot better than I thought she would. And so, um, you know, I think that... Um, I think it's really important that you actually mention that. I, I, th I know that's a common thread of concern for most parents about the future with our children. But that's a reality with a lot of children, mm -hmm. um, that's true. generally yeah. speaking. I mean, we really don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that that sense of um, worry for the future can certainly keep one up at night. I know it has done even for me as well. Mm -hmm. So, I Oh, yeah, what I was going to say is that there was also a revelation about, um, you know, having a job or living on your own. That's not the... That's not the definition of a success, success as a human being. That doesn't want to make true. someone as valuable, right? True. So why why yeah. am I holding her up to some artificial societal standard? I, I mean, it's all mummy wars all over again, right? It's, it's not <laughs> necessary. True. And so yes. she's happy and she brings us happiness. And there's inherent value in that. And, Absolutely. And I think that that was a really big revelation is that there's, you know, graduating high school with a proper diploma. All these things are just false um la false um milestones that aren't maybe our milestones are different and that's okay 
And so that to mm-hmm. me, that was a revelation. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I agree with you. Um, even as a teacher, uh, you don't necessarily have to get a PhD to be a value to society. Mm-hmm. That, that's 100% true, and our children are certainly valuable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Kathy? Um, I think in our house, it's the, um, the little things, the small, the small things that we celebrate uh, that other parents would take for granted. Absolutely. Um, do you know what I mean? Oh, completely. I, I don't even know if I can give you a proper example, but it's just... It's just the little things, and you know, if we get through a, a day and it's a good, successful day, and school went well, and something new was learned, then you know that's uh, we're celebrating. Absolutely, uh, I know, Tina. You mentioned that on a prior podcast, where you know, typical parents might not think this little thing is oh, so special, but no. to us, they're they're mm-hmm. glorious. Absolutely. Let's yeah. throw a party yeah. down. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For, for exactly. what our child has accomplished today. Yeah. Oh, I agree. So, I mean, what you're saying is you yeah. have a lot of joy, you know, on a daily basis because these milestones that your I child is... That's, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Ach- achieving are great. Oh, no, I agree. Mm-hmm. It's true. We do have a sense of wanting a party every single day <laughs> where, where a lot of people just take for granted. And sometimes um, you can just see something and you can just realize... Hey, that never would have happened two years mm-hmm. ago. There is no way. My daughter got wet, and she shrugged it off and kept playing. And I remember when she was in kindergarten, she got wet. All those clothes were off, and it didn't matter if she was in the middle of the classroom. And mm-hmm. so I just – sometimes it's – you. it just hits you how far you've come. Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. And you can take a joy in that, whereas – that might not be that might be lost on the parents of neurotypical children yeah. absolutely uh, just yesterday i had to go to the doctor and it, uh, my son didn't have school so he had to come with me we waited half an hour in the waiting room then when we went in to see her we were in there for another i don't know 10 10 minutes or so and he sat so patiently and he was with us he was aware he was listening he was smiling and like Fantastic. you say that would never have happened even six months ago, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. Yeah. Gosh, well, I I know one revelation that I had is, um, I I consider my life far more genuine and authentic currently mm-hmm. than it was before having my child, mm-hmm. and and the second he was diagnosed, I noticed my true friends stuck with me, and those that weren't left my surroundings, mm-hmm. and I've. I found that now my life is filled with far more authentic joy and and appreciation and gratitude where, I mean, even myself, I took an awful lot for granted before having a mm-hmm. child where now I'm, it's true, I'm appreciative of every single thing and I'm also really appreciative of the people that I've met. Now, now I know some of you are going to be saying, about the autism community the one thing i absolutely love about the autism community especially the ones that i've met are the fact that you surround yourself with one people that get it two people that clearly know what you're going through Mm -hmm. and three because they're very empathetic to everybody's situation you have a genuine support group something that i didn't even know existed beforehand Mm -hmm. so the Mm -hmm. revelation that i had was that um the people in this community and the people that you meet with the, with their children and themselves, you meet a really great bunch of genuine, authentic mm-hmm. people. And the fact that all of these mm-hmm. people have come into my life, I know my life is far richer than it was prior to his mm-hmm. diagnosis. It's, it's, I know exactly mm-hmm. what you're saying. Very, very, yeah, very true. These are other people yeah. that are rising to the same challenges exactly. you are, right? Absolutely, and I think, Tina, what you were mentioning earlier on, you were talking about help. Now, um, as far as I'm concerned, the people that I've met in the community have clearly helped me, and I agree with you. If you reach out and ask for help, there's help available. I think you just really have to ask, and the fact that the help is out there, something I never even knew existed beforehand, Mm -hmm. I think my life is far richer than Mm -hmm. it was before. And and having um, my son on the spectrum has really brought me a sense of peace and joy with knowing this is out there mm-hmm. so 
That's yeah. my revelation. Yay. Yay. Good revelations yeah. all around. <laughs> now, I want to thank Kathy and Tina for joining us again because time seems to have once again run out on our show today. Well, thanks for having us back. Yeah, yeah oh, thank you. Well, now, for our audience out there who are listening, I want to thank you for sending in your questions, and I'd encourage you to do the same once again by clicking on autism30.com and clicking the word contact and sending your questions into us because we'd love to clearly address and answer them as best we can. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, don't forget to write us a review. Once again, I really appreciate all you 98 countries out there who are listening to us. And once again, this is Tally telling you to live in love. Hey yo, I'm an autism awareness angel, making sure my 